against. Well, maybe they were right. Baseballs have been jumping out of Major League Parks at a record pace this year, but oddly enough, not tonight at the All-Star Game. Want to see the score? There's the score. There is no score in the 10th inning. A part of the reason has been the pitching, including, of course, American League starter Brett Saberhagen of the Royals, who went three scoreless innings in his first start. So again, they are now in the bottom half of the 10th inning. No score in the All-Star Game. Bo Jackson held his news conference in Auburn, Alabama today. As expected, Bo announced he's reached agreement with the Raiders to play football after the baseball season. What's hard to believe is what else Bo said at the news conference today. He says his royal teammates are pleased with him. Before anybody else knew about this, my teammates knew. There's nothing I have to hide from them. They've accepted what I've done. They're all glad that I'm trying to do it simply because I'm hopefully will be the first person to do it and, and uh, see at it. And plus, they all want tickets to the game, so. I don't know who Bo's been hanging around with, but it's a different bunch of guys than we've been hanging around with. Anyway, Bo expects to sign his contract with the Raiders shortly. Speculation is he may get as much as a million dollars for approximately 10 games. The Raiders seem content with such an arrangement, but Chiefs head coach Frank Gann says he wouldn't be. I don't know that I could do that. I'd, he may be a great enough athlete to do that, but what would happen then if you had someone who was really playing well for you? What, did you cut him for an unknown guy? That's hard to do. Meanwhile, the Royals cleared the way today for Lonnie Smith to be brought up from Omaha. They traded Juan Beniquez. Beniquez goes to the Toronto Blue Jays for minor league pitcher Luis Aquino, who will be assigned to Omaha. And one other good note on this guy, the doctor who did... Simply because at the, the time when they were coming up, they didn't have the, op the opportunities that I had, and that's why they expressed negative feelings at that point in time. But we had a big meeting, and everybody is happy for me, and I'm glad that they are, because the last, the last thing that we need on the team is controversy right now. Well, I'll tell you this, if they win, it's all right. If they lose, they'll be pointing the finger at Bo Jackson. Well, reaction to Bo's arrival as a Raider was mixed among his future teammates. Many could not believe how much Bo is going to be paid for playing part-time. A million dollars for half the season. Help! <laughs> that is my reaction. Is he really? A million bucks? That's right. Well, that's nuts. That's crazy. Wow, what a shock. Well, I, you know, again, you know, it's like Wayne Garland said after he got signed as a free agent from Baltimore and then he tore up his shoulder, you know, for $2 million and couldn't play. He says, nobody's, nobody's ever overpaid. So, you know, if he has the kind of, uh, it's indicative of the fact that it irritates me that people get paid for their college careers. But, you know, it's like uh, Howie made the point, you know. Uh, we'll, we'll end up signing uh, Qaddafi if you can get us to San Diego. <laughs> <laughs> and, of course, San Diego is the site of this year's, uh, uh, the... Uh, what is it this year's game? Super Bowl game, that's right. Well, that's the 58th Major League All-Star game. Could the hitters be tamed in the midseason classic? Bo Jackson's midseason will make a move from the diamond to the gridiron. And in Spain, a full season in one week. The last leg of the running of the Bulls. All this and more ahead on... And good evening. Welcome again to the ESPN Sports Center, along with John Saunders. I'm Bob Lee. So much for the lively ball debate. You know, you pick up what they're using tonight in Oakland, you'll see the judge's uh, signature, Kennesaw Mountain Landers from 1919, because there ain't been no runs. I know. That ball must go a long way back, as you say, and they must have been sitting in crates because nobody's... Uh, they've been pitching like they've still been in crates <laughs> as they've been going towards home plate. There are players with 20 home runs at the All-Star break who didn't even make the All-Star team. So it's clear hitting has dominated this first half. But jackrabbit ball or not, the National and American League All-Stars couldn't solve the pitching tonight. That's right, not a run. It's the longest period ever in All-Star history that they have gone without scoring at least one run in the game. It is still scoreless. No score. They're in the top of the 11th inning right now. As you take a look, Tim Raines has moved on to second base. The best scoring opportunities came into the seventh inning. Dale Murphy made a catch of Mark McGuire to end the inning in the ninth inning. Evans held Reigns at third as he was tagging with a chance to score, but the ball from Samuel was not shallow, or was shallow, and he couldn't get in. Then Dave Winfield tried to score on a double play ball, and he was tossed out at home plate by reliever Steve Bedrosian. So the score is still scoreless right now. 0-0 is in the 11th inning. 
going to the bottom of the 11th. Okay, while we wait for something to develop in Oakland and should it within the balance of this half hour, we will have uh, highlights and possibly a live report. Let's talk football. Sometime later this week, Bo Jackson should be signing his contract with the L.A. Raiders. The Kansas City Royals are hardly thrilled, but they do recognize that Bo has said baseball is his priority. Today in Alabama, Jackson took stock of all the naysayers. The more folks say he can't play both sports well, the more Bo wants to do it. I use that type of criticism as fuel for uh, my fire. Then I go out and I prove them wrong every time. Jackson Tampa Bay offered Bo Jackson to... over a million dollars per year to sign with them in 1986. Bo chose baseball, but Al Davis always seems a step ahead of the game. Last April, his Raiders took Jackson in the seventh round of the draft. Thus began the concept of a backfield of Marcus Allen and Bo Jackson. It was Al's idea originally in the paper. When Al drafted him, I'm sure all of you saw, a lot of you called me at that time, as a matter of fact, and said he wanted Bo to play halftime. And um, but we did not talk then. Um, we did not talk until in the last couple of weeks. I was a marked man all through college. And when people keyed on me, everybody else scored and put points on uh, the uh, board. So if I get there and I'm the marked man, Mark is going to run him to death. Jackson's estimate, he could be football ready by mid-November, depending upon how long the Royals stay alive. KC ownership has given its blessing. His teammates have not. What about manager Billy Gardner? Billy is the type of guy that whatever pleases the players, he's happy. I think his exact words, if I'm not misquoting him, he looked at me and smiled and said, Go for it. <laughs> In just so many words. Now, the contract that Bo Jackson's going to sign gives him two weeks off after the baseball season. Then it specifies he will be ready to play in the NFL two weeks after that for the Raiders. Let's get back to baseball proper. The two second-place teams in the American League working a trade today. The Royals and the Blue Jays have just completed a weekend series, and today Toronto acquires a veteran Juan Beniquez, age 37, in return for a minor league pitcher, Luis Aquino. The Royals then called up Lonnie Smith from AAA. Casey had to do something with Lonnie Smith by terms of his free agent contract, so they will... The interview John Scherholzer in the middle <laughs> well, of the Well, I'm game. glad we got that in. And we're going to talk more about Bo here in just a minute, but first... <laughs> What experience was this for you? Uh, it was thrilling for me. Uh, when I hit the ball, I thought I had a chance to go out. And, uh, I hit it good, and you know, I was just running the first point. You just got to go. We just got to get out of here. It just, was, it just that feeling was the best thrill of the night for me. But you know, I wish we could have come back and won it. They said they used a different kind of ball tonight than they used during the regular season because they're especially made for the All Star game. You think they had a regular one in there? You would have popped it out? No, I don't think so. <laughs> I crushed it. You know, I think maybe if it was during the daytime a little bit, it may have more of a chance and. You know, when I was running down there, it felt like the wind picked up, too, so, you know, I, I, it, it was fun, though. It was really a great experience for you, and I, and I know you'll carry this with you for the rest of your life. Yeah, definitely. Thank you, Frank. Bo Jackson made it official. The Royals left fielder announced he agreed to a contract to play football for the Los Angeles Raiders. That contract, five years for an estimated two and a half million dollars. But Jackson can't play for the Raiders until the Royals' baseball season is over. How can Jackson earn the respect of the Raiders when Bo will not be going through the Raiders training camp? I think I have their, re, uh, their re, uh, re respect. I have been told of some of the comments that the Raiders have expressed toward me, and they're all positive, say that they are glad that I can be a part of their uh, team and can be a part of their season this year after baseball season they all say that they can't wait until I come out the Raiders will only have Bo for half the season but Raiders coach Tom Flores is still glad to have him you don't usually get a Heisman Trophy winner with a seventh round draft pick but Flores says Bo will be behind on his conditioning after playing baseball there is a difference uh, no question about it the, the, the football part uh, it has a lot to do with the hitting and, and getting hit and the bruises and the aches and pains that go along with the first week or so of, of uh, extensive training. And you just can't get that any place but in a football camp. So he's going to have some catching up to do. But as I said before, he's a unique player. The Chiefs also signed their seventh-round draft pick today, but he's no Heisman Trophy winner. He's quarterback Doug Hudson, a 6'2", 201 there tomorrow at five and six. some good hustle by frank bull to get that on the satellite oh, yeah he was he was moving okay thanks gordon when we come back a little old man
NFL Pro Bowl in consecutive seasons. Well, it's possible now that Bose made it official, he'll double up his pro career, joining the L.A. Raiders this fall after his season in Kansas City ends. The fact that some Royals and Raiders have said he won't be able to perform well doing both doesn't bother Bose. I use that type of criticism as fuel for uh, my fire. Then I go out and I prove them wrong every time. Here's what Bo's finances look like now. On the right side, his soon-to-be-signed Raiders deal. $2.6 million for five years, a million-dollar signing bonus, and a million-dollar loan. His royal royalties run through the 1988 baseball season. I'm Tom Kirkland. Bye -bye. Kansas City's Bo Jackson didn't make the all-star team this year. Maybe he's thinking about all-pro this winter. Because Tuesday at Auburn, the former Heisman Trophy winning running back announced that he'll sign a contract to play with the L.A. Raiders this fall as soon as the Royals finish their season. That's a lot of pressure to put on a young man to perform in two sports. The only pressure a person can have is the pressure that he puts on himself. And I'm not that type of person. I take things into stride. And what things I can change, I do. And the things I can't, I let it stay at that. Tom West, Headline Sports. You won't be for five games, and some won't be back with their pre-All-Star teams at all. We'll start with all the fuss. American League President Dr. Bobby Brown has suspended two Royals and an Indian for five games without pay for starting fights two nights in a row last week in Cleveland. Kansas City's Willie Wilson had just been brushed back by Cleveland right-hander Ken Schramm. He didn't like it. After popping out, Wilson interrupted his jaunt back to the dugout, stopping by the mound to take Schramm down. Wilson's out five games pending appeal. And then Wednesday evening, Kansas City lefty pitcher Danny Jackson started the bottom of the first inning wildly winging a couple of pitches behind Cleveland's leadoff hitter Brett Butler's head. After Butler answered the second call, 16 minutes of this stuff ensued. Both Jackson and Butler also like the Raiders. And to make matters worse, Jackson looked real bad trying to get that one against Mike Boddicker. And you hear the fans a little bit there. Top of the third, Eddie Murray creams one against Charlie Liebrandt. And to the left field seats, two-run homer, his 21st, two-nothing Orioles. Bottom of the third, Kevin Seitzer. Jumping on this one, a screamer. Onto the hill beyond the center field fence for a two-run homer, number five for Seitzer on the year 2-2.